Hey guys, before we get started, a little bit about this video. This is one of my favorite videos because it deals with the magic of Christmas, but I made this video last year and the audio quality wasn't good. This year I was able to clean up the old video with AI, uh, so it's a better listening experience. Uh, so if you want to be the coolest guy at your office Christmas party, get my very NORAD Christmas uh, sweater at Bunker Branding uh, that has an American F-15 and a Canadian CF-18 escorting Santa through the night. Watch this video with your kids. Enjoy the show. How does NORAD track Santa? Every year, the TV news has a story about NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, and how they track Santa on his trip from the North Pole to deliver presents all around the world. But how does NORAD actually accomplish this task? Well, the answer is surprisingly similar to how NORAD performs any kind of unknown aircraft intercept. NORAD was founded in 1958 in Colorado Springs, Colorado as a combined organization between Canada and the United States with the mission of protecting the air sovereignty of North America. You see, the world of the 1950s, back when NORAD was founded, was a very different world than it is today. Approximately one-sixth of the world was under a type of government called communism. And if you think it's tough always having to listen to your parents, under communism, the populations of entire countries were treated like children. Parents and children alike were told by their communist governments where they could live, what they could eat, and even that they were forbidden to celebrate Christmas. Many communist countries considered Santa's message of peace and kindness and goodwill to be a threat to their domination over their populations. Santa says it to NORAD, the Continental Air Defense Commander, CONAD, began tracking Santa to make sure that he traveled through North America safely. So how does NORAD actually track Santa? Well, Santa normally has something called a transponder in his sleigh. In order to enter U.S. airspace and fly at or above flight level 180 or 18,000 feet, you must be equipped with a Mode S based transponder. This is basically a special radio that automatically lets other aircraft and air traffic control know your location so the two aircraft don't bump into each other and it has a range of about 115 miles. All commercial aircraft are equipped with transponders, and Santa's sleigh is considered a commercial aircraft. Now, there is a second way that NORAD tracks Santa, and that's the REITS, or the Rudolph Infrared Tracking System. Rudolph's nose puts out an incredible amount of light, but it also puts out heat. If you put your hand over the heater vent in your house, your hand can actually detect the heat coming out of that vent. Well, NORAD has special satellites floating in space that can detect or see this heat and translate it to a computer screen. It's called SIBRS, or the Space-Based Infrared System, and it's mainly used to detect submarine-launch ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. Lockheed Martin built this constellation of six satellites which monitors the Earth for the distinctive heat signature of missile launches. Now, the heat coming from Rudolph's nose is roughly 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, that is nine times the maximum heat of the oven your parents used to make Christmas cookies. So if Santa leaves for his trip around the world and forgets to turn on his transponder, NORAD won't know whether the new heat source of the North Pole is Santa or a cruise missile that's been launched from a submarine that's broken up through the Arctic ice. And this actually happened a few years ago. Thanks to NORAD and the California Air National Guard who were stationed in Alaska helping defend American airspace during the pandemic. I've been able to reconstruct the intercept with radio and audio footage. At Peterson Space Force Space, Colorado Springs, Colorado, the N2C2, or NORAD NORTHCOM Command Center, is run 24 hours a day. It's late at night when a warning comes up on the big board. Sir, Buckley, start warning for the exercise. 60 doesn't turn. Hawks use a seven minutes time to intercept. Sir, seven minutes time to intercept from Buckley for next time. The big board lists a suspicious heat signature, TOI-1, or Target of Interest 1, and the alert goes out to the crew in the N2C2. Now, this blinking dot is normally called a track, and it could be Santa Claus, or it could be the launch of a cruise missile toward the United States or Canada. Right now, it's just something very hot and very fast, heading toward North America, and NORAD needs to figure out what this thing is. What happens next involves hundreds of people, and surprisingly, a lot of it is sent over secure text message, and conference calls are used as well. 
A couple of different people start to appear in the message window, and each of these people have very important jobs in defending American and Canadian airspace. That's the N2C2, or NORAD operations. That's the chief of combat operations. It's usually an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. He or she is in charge of the AOC, or Air Operations Center for Alaska. ANR is the Alaska NORAD region. And Jay Bear is Joint Base Elmdorf Richardson in Alaska. The SADO is the Senior Air Defense Officer on duty. They're typically a captain or a major, and they're in charge of all C2, or command and control, assets. The SIDO is the Senior Intelligence Officer. They're typically a captain, and they are in charge of knowing everything about all the capabilities of any kind of adversary. Top Rock joins the conversation. They are the air defense coordinators for the Alaska sector, and they announced that they've activated F-15s from the 144th Fighter Wing to intercept the target. Now the 144th on-duty operations officer announces that he will launch two F-15s from Joint Base Elmdorf Richardson to intercept target of interest one. And he's announcing their call signs of Griffin 1 and Griffin 2. Canar, or Canadian NORAD region, announces that they are scrambling two Canadian CF-18 fighters in case the track turns into Canada. Right now, as you watch this, pilots are sitting in alert barns all across the United States of Canada. These are special rooms where pilots can relax and even play video games. They typically do 24-hour shifts and they are never more than five minutes in their planes. These planes are sitting fueled and armed. 24 7 and 365 days a year scramble is the code word for the act of quickly mobilizing military aircraft the operations officer quickly briefs the pilots on the threat and the pilots run to their planes Meanwhile, the 144th operations officer calls J Bear Control Tower and notifies them of the scramble order. Control Tower, Master Sergeant Mitchell. How may I help you, sir, ma'am? This is Lieutenant Bala, operations officer of the 144th Fighter Wing. We're executing scramble order 9 one Roger, we'll make it happen. Inside the control tower, the J Bear air traffic controllers find scramble order 982.1 and follow the procedure. Step one is to clear out any air traffic in front of the runway. So anything on the runway is told to get off. Everything in front of the runway is told to leave the airspace to give the F-15 pilots a clear and unrestricted climb into the sky. The pilots can go as high as they want and as fast as they want in order to intercept the incoming threat. The lead pilot is known as Griffin-01 and the wingman is known as Griffin-02. They're ready to go. The leader contacts the town. Cooper Towers, Griffin 01, two ship SF-15s requesting unrestricted climb runway 24. Griffin 01, this is Tower, wind 270 at 10. Visibility 3, sky condition 5000, scatter. Temperature minus 2, dew point 3, altimeter 2, 9 or 9 or 2. Approved for unrestricted takeoff in accordance with scramble order 9 or 8, 2.1. Griffin 01, runway 24, clear for takeoff, contact the Anchorage approach. 118.6. The tower always sends the weather conditions and the runway identifier number. If you look at a runway, you'll see a pair of numbers. Runway 24 means a runway that faces 240 degrees. The pilot needs to make sure that they got the tower instructions correctly, so they read back the instructions to the tower. Tower Griffin 01, weather acknowledged, altimeter 2992, I copy, runway cleared. Unrestricted for takeoff runway 24, contact Anchorage Approach 118.6, request uniform. The pilots taxi their planes after the runway. As they do this, they check in with RAPCON, or Radar Approach Control. This organization keeps an eye on all civilian traffic and clears them out of the way so the fighters have a safe path to intercept. RAPCON, this is Griffin 01, Tuesday at 15 out of Zaber on unrestricted... Takeoff heading 360, Angels 18 on intercept. Are we clear of traffic? This is 
Athens, Rapcon. You are clear of traffic. And the two F-15s push their throttle to the firewall as they take off. <laughs> Once airborne and a flight level 180 or 18,000 feet, the planes head north and contact Top Rock, the air defense controllers, to let them know that they are fragged in the air and checking in, everything normal and as a sign. Top Rock, Griffin 01, checking in as fragged, weapon safe, request heading to cut off TY1. Griffin 02, weapon safe. Top Rock responds with an authentication code before sending any additional data. This is a special code word group that pilots verify in a lookup table to make sure they really are talking to Top Rock. That way our adversaries can't give false or misleading orders. Griffin 01, mission ID, we authenticate Charlie Alpha Tango. Top Rock, Griffin 01, I authenticate Charlie Alpha Tango. Now that Top Rock is authenticated as genuine, they can start sending orders. And they start by sending the exact location of the unidentified aircraft, or bogey, which is over the Arctic Ocean and closing in fast on Alaska. Top Rock gives the bearing, the distance, and the altitude of the bogey. Griffin, Top Rock, radar contact 360-1600 at 20K bogey. Meanwhile, two additional air assets are scrambled. An E-3 Sentry AWACS, or Airborne Warning and Control System, launches out of Joint Base Elmdorf-Richardson. This plane is unarmed, but it carries a very powerful radar dish that can see roughly 250 miles along with a crew that can help control the battle space. The second air asset to be scrambled is a KC-135 tanker aircraft from Isleson Air Force Base, southeast of Fairbanks. This aircraft is also unarmed, but it has a special refueling boom that can actually refuel aircraft in mid-flight. F-15s carry a lot of gas, but not enough to make it to the North Pole and back, so they're going to need that KC-135 tanker for the return trip. And Top Rock advises Griffin of the new air assets and their call signs. Griffin 01, AWACS on station as frag call sign sentry. Griffin copy. Meanwhile, back at N2C2, TOI-1 is moving straight toward Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. The intercept will likely occur over the Beaufort Sea. Alaska is so big that the jets take an hour to get close to the track. But 100 miles from the target, the F-15's powerful radar finally detects TOI-1, and Griffin-01 calls it in. Top Rock, Griffin-01, radar contact TOI-1, over at 360, 120,000, confirmed bogey. Top Rock copies, radar contact 360, 100, at 20K, confirmed bogey. As Griffin-01 approaches the target, they can use the F-15's powerful sniper pod. This pod has an infrared camera that can actually see the heat signature from Rudolph's nose. Griffin calls it in. I actually have a long-range video of Santa and his sleigh on infrared. Top Rock, Griffin 01. Eyeball, TOI-1, single red beacon. Stand by ID. Top Rock, uh, Griffin... Now, the Air Force asked me not to show a close-up view of Santa and his sleigh. Santa uses advanced technology that allows him to fly around the world in one night, and showing the sleigh could expose technologies that our adversaries could use against us. So, this close-up view has been redacted. Griffin 01 ID 8, healthy reindeer, going to sleigh with a ton of toys as cargo. Uh, Top Rock Griffin 01 identifies single pilot red now, even though the Air Force has identified Santa, they still have to make radio contact with the target and tell him to turn on his transponder so he can safely enter U.S. airspace. They do this on the guard frequency, either uh, 121.5 MHz or 243 MHz, which are monitored by all pilots, including Santa. Unknown aircraft, this is Griffin 01, United States Air Force, F-15 on an active air defense scramble. Please identify yourself and acknowledge by rocking your wings. 
or with radio transmission if you need assistance. Unknown aircraft, contact Griffin 01 on 243.0 or 121.5. Griffin-01 just instructed Santa to press a button on his Mode S-Base transponder to omit identification code 2255. Squawk 2255. Santa presses the button and the new track instantly appears on the F-15's display. Copy. I didn't receive. Good track. The planes fall into a formation 500 feet behind Santa and escort him into Alaska. But the night isn't over. When Santa enters Canada, the N2C2 will hand Santa off to CF-18s of the Royal Canadian Air Force. When Santa dips back into America, he'll be handed off to F-35s of Vermont's 134th Fighter Squadron. And finally, when Santa leaves American airspace for Mexico, Santa will be handed off to F-5s from the Mexican Air Force. So when you open your presents this year, think of the hundreds of men and women of the United States Air Force, the Air National Guard, the Space Force, the Canadian Royal Air Force, and the Fuerza Era Mexicana, who worked tirelessly to keep Santa safe on his journey through North America. Thanks for watching, guys. Head on over to Bunker Branding to get your very own A Very NORAD Christmas sweater. Uh, take us out, 80s commercial. In a world where fashion meets firepower, where style becomes strategy, it's time to gear up for the ultimate mission with Bunker Branding. Introducing the Rock Out With Your Chalk Out t-shirt, a tribute to the fearless air cavalry. Feel the adrenaline rush as you don the pride of the skies. For those of you who dare from the air, precision and power unite when you think outside the bomb. And don't miss our Live Laugh Launch t-shirts for Patriot and High Mars, because sometimes defending freedom means bringing the thunder. Finally, for the true defender of the seas, we present Department of the Boat People. Sail with honor and show your allegiance to the world's mightiest maritime force. With these shirts, hoodies, and stickers, along with the tow missile, landmines, and drone warfare. These aren't just shirts, they're statements. They're your way of saying I stand for strength, unity, and style. Get yours at Bunker Branding today.